الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات واعملوا صالحا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الحلال بين وإن الحرام بين وبينهما مشتبهات أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this short series we want to talk about the importance of halal consumption and we start off by reminding ourselves that it is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has made us human beings. He has made us the best of creation. Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ التَّقْوِيمِ We have created human beings in the best form. We are the best of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the sun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the moon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created stars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created so much creation that it is innumerable, the universe. And every creation, when we see some of the programs that have been done in terms of looking at what is beneath the sea and in the sea and the beautiful fishes, yet we are better than them. The beautiful animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, and we are better than them. The beautiful creation around us, and we are better than them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us the best of creation. Why? Because you and I have the opportunity to attain Jannah. Even the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created angels. They worship all the time. Some are in ruku', some are in sujood, some are in qiyam. In every single state, angels are there, and they will be there. Some are doing tawaf of Baytul Ma'mur above the seven heavens, above the Kaaba, And yet you and I are better than them. We say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us human beings. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a choice, a choice to make in this world. How do we behave? Who do we believe? What, what is our goal? What is our objective? And then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has not only made us human beings, then he helped us to make the right choice of becoming believers of Islam. We became Muslim. We didn't become Muslim. Allah gave us the tawfiq to become Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put into our hearts this iman. And this is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you and I can never repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Many of us, we were born Muslim. How many sajdas did we make in the womb of our mother for us to come out as Muslim? None. And yet we were born Muslim. This is an amazing, we cannot thank, even if we stayed in sajda all our lives, we will not be able to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us Muslim. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, for making us the best of creation. Then we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the greatest gift that anyone can be given and that is the gift of Iman and making us believers and making us say the Shahada La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Then we move on that as soon as we say the Kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah there are obligations upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not said you become Muslim and then you are free to do whatever you want. Because Aslama Yuslimu Muslimun the word Muslim comes from submission, submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you and I call ourselves Muslim, then we need to understand that we have to submit. Submit to what? To the will of Allah and to the will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who was guided by Allah, who was given information from Allah, who was given wahi uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to follow and submit to that will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us orders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has refrained us from doing certain things and he's given, given us orders to do certain things. Establish the salah. We have to perform salah. 
Give zakah, we have to give zakah. Perform the hajj, we have to perform the hajj. Fast in the month of Ramadan, we have to fast in the month of Ramadan. All these obligations come upon us, but not only those, there are many other obligations. Be kind to your neighbors. Be careful what you say, do not hurt anyone with your tongue. Do not be jealous. Try and move harm away from people, from the streets. So many obligations that come upon a believer because we have submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the will of our desires. And as part of that, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to earn halal, to make sure our earnings are halal. And then from those earnings, we give zakat. And another obligation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is that we consume halal. We consume halal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of our bodies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is best for us. Allah says in the Quran, that he is the one who makes halal for them that which is good. And he is the one who makes haram for them that which is bad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, amongst all the obligations that he has given us, one of the most important obligations that he has given us is that we must consume halal. Now in this small section, I just want to touch upon an amazing point which the ulama have mentioned. They say that look how important halal is. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum. O you who believe, eat that halal which we have given you as sustenance. And he also orders the Messengers, and he says, Ya ayyuhal rusul, kulu min al-tayyibati wa amalu saliha. O messengers, eat that which is halal and then do good actions. Now, when we look at the obligations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, whether it's salah, let's look at just the five pillars. After becoming a Muslim, we have four, four more pillars of Islam. Salah, zakat, saum, and hajj. Salah. When does that become necessary upon us? Is it necessary for a baby to perform salah? Is it necessary for a three-year-old to perform salah? Is it necessary for a five-year-old to perform salah? Is it necessary? No. We know that salah does not become incumbent and compulsory until the age of puberty. Psalm, fasting. Fasting is a pillar of Islam. When does it become compulsory? It doesn't become compulsory for a five-year-old, for a seven-year-old. For a nine-year-old, until they become uh, at the age of puberty, then they will have to fast in the month of Ramadan. Zakah, zakah only becomes compulsory, not only due to age, but you have to have a certain amount of wealth and fulfill the criteria before zakah becomes farad. And then hajj, hajj has criteria. You have to be a certain age, and then you have to be financially and physically able to perform the hajj. And for females, they have to have mahram as well. Then the conditions are fulfilled. Then they will be able to do the hajj. So these are the five pillars of Islam. And yet, they do not become farad and compulsory until a certain criteria is met and not even until the age of 13, 14, 15. But when it comes to consuming halal, brothers and sisters, Allahu Akbar, halal is so important in our lives that the mother whose child is in the womb, she has to consume halal because if she consumes haram, it will affect the baby in the womb. When the baby is born, it doesn't mean that you can feed that child haram until the age of 12 or 13, no. Halal is so important, halal consumption is so important that as soon as a child is born, you have to make sure that that child, whatever it is consuming, the baby powder, make sure it's halal. The baby biscuit, make sure it's halal. The sweets, make sure they're halal. How many times we get a text from our friends, Maulana, Imam, is this from Tesco, they'll send a picture. This is the ingredients of these sweets, is this halal? Why? They're worried that their child should not eat haram. So, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us obligations within Islam. And there are five pillars of Islam which are the most important. And yet we find 
that the halal consumption is so important that it starts when a baby is born and then carries on throughout all our lives, all our lives until when a person reaches the age of 80, 85 and is slowly deteriorating. He's on his deathbed and even then we have to make sure that in the last moments that person who is dying does not consume haram. Brothers and sisters, halal is extremely important. Halal is one of the most important pillars of our faith. And that is why many ulama, like Imam Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi, when he mentions the most important pillars of Islam, he mentions this hadith that halal is clear and haram is clear. And in between, there are doubtful items. And not many people know about them. And we should beware that we only consume halal and we stay away from haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the importance of halal. Inshallah we will continue to discuss the importance of halal in our next section. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.